that last question about how to work with mythical beings brings us to our next question, how to work together with such mythical beings and power animals in rituals. Um, in rituals I find that um, you know, such uh, greater spirits are very good allies to, uh, to have. Uh, there are many challenges if we are performing a ritual. One of them is of course to um, get the ingredients right and in the right uh, measure and order. Um, and being human we tend to make mistakes with this and fortunately we have allies and power animals which can compensate a little bit for those mistakes if the energy we call is slightly too high or too low vibration or if the call was too long or too short they can nudge us, give us some hints like what we're doing wrong uh, but they also can sometimes directly intervene by bringing more of a certain energy or releasing a certain energy or removing it. So um, the other big problem is of course maintaining the space, maintaining the purity of the space and also power animals can help with that. So often I will um, when starting a ritual I will invite uh, my power animals and the animals associated with uh, the different powers I'm calling. So I can call for instance um, for the energy of, uh, of inspiration of um, the new dawn and the certain powers like this and then I'm in a way putting the burden all onto myself to have the correct vibration to attract the correct energy but I could also combine it so I can say like okay I call upon the powers of inspiration of birth of new beginnings and I call upon brother eagle and brother eagle is in a way the animal which works with these energies who is in a way the embodiment of these energies and by welcoming Brother Eagle into my ritual space, he can help me manage those energies. So I would say it's a lot easier to do rituals with power animals than it is to do without. If you do a ritual with power animals, it also tends to turn out differently every time because you grow, uh, they grow, uh, circumstances are different. If you do a ritual using symbols, it tends to be more rigid, more similar every time because uh, a symbol is just a structure which is always uh, virtually identical. It is just depending on the energy available to empower the ritual, so the place where you do it, uh, potential ley lines, uh, you could say the astrological constellations, and uh, these things make it make a symbol also to act differently but these are often circumstances which are out of our control so working with a symbol in a way makes it more constant but also um, a lot harder to fine-tune the ritual to exactly that uh, place, time or uh, purpose or participant So after calling the different elements, and I usually either um, call a power animal or sometimes also the, uh, the deity or the greater spirit which has to do with that element. So for instance if I want to create a bridge uh, between my ritual space and other worlds, I will call on Elegba or on Anubis or uh, on Hecate. So I tend to use the power animals and also call to the deities which will guide me in the process of the ritual to, um, to build the ritual space and to create the right energy there. One of the things I uh, will often also use my power animals for in, if I do perform a ritual is uh, keeping the space stable and clean. So eating any energetic parasites which might be disrupting the situation, um, also keeping the energy at the correct vibration and um, 
in a way of visualization. It's not fun, but if I, especially if I do it slightly dynamic, so I walk around or I dance around or I drum or um, chant, that I will in a way visualize my power animals doing this with me. And they kind of enjoy doing this with you, by the way. <laughs> and um, thereby I become even more joined in the process of building the ritual with my power animals. And the energy will also flow more fluidly between myself and my power animals. So often if I'm walking around in a circle, my other power animals will be walking around in the same circle um, around the ritual space. Um, often a power animal will, in a way, also work through my body um, during the ritual. So if I'm calling for a certain power, often the spirit will enter into my body and issue the call together with me. Um, same can happen, by the way, with ancestor spirits. Some ancestor spirits also have connections to certain powers or to certain energies which are not available to uh, your current incarnation, but by joining with them, those powers can be called or summoned into the ritual space. Other ways to um, to work with it are also to um, um, ask them to work with somebody specific. And this is a, li a little bit more difficult. Um, because often the, the power animal will have a strong attunement to the shaman who is performing the ritual. And um, some power animals are very social. They're okay with going around the ritual space and giving help and support to whoever needs it. Others don't even want to talk with anybody else except for their shaman. So it depends very much upon the personality of the power animal, what role they're willing to play. It is possible though that if you have very social uh, spirits that uh, they will actually enter into the bodies of the other people who are participating in the ritual and that's yeah this way it will be um, a kind of a, a ritual not just for the humans but also of and for the spirits themselves so one uh, example which I can, uh, can think of um, is that I wanted to uh, to perform a ritual and there were actually various spirits which were interested in, uh, in joining into this ritual and um, to be able to manifest themselves they needed embodiments and well they couldn't all embody through me at the same time so I got some people together and we got around in a circle and then we I called upon the different spirits and powers and deities which wanted to manifest themselves and once they were assembled they each selected uh, a person who they felt most uh, in tune with, who they could manifest through most easily. And then each yeah, person, while joined with the spirit, did their part in the ritual. Um, so this was a very nice experience and also a very nice way to uh, uh, to really work in the, in the method of a mystery school. Um, mystery school is kind of a concept which has been uh, a little bit polluted. If you look at the, uh, what I would consider the more original mystery schools in the Egyptian tradition, uh, people would be put in... Uh, a sanctuary, a place of holy energies, and there they would uh, join with uh, a greater power or a greater spirit or the emanation of it, so they would in a way embody that uh, god or goddess or greater spirit, and the other people around them would do something similar, so they would in a way manifest a part of the cosmos there, and out of the interplay of the different powers which can happen if they all meet and are brought in the same place and in the same vibration. You can learn a lot about yourself, but also about the different powers which are being represented there. And this is a very good philosophical experience and also it 
gives a very clear knowledge of cosmology. Um, so, in ultimately a, a mystery school, this is also what is happening. Um, if I look at, uh, for instance, um, how Master uh, Vladimir was doing things, he would enclose more or less the, the space and the members of the space would be become part of the energy body of, uh, of the school and uh, then he would be in a way building up temperature, he would make energy available so that people are able to transform and therefore able to use the experiences they're getting and also all this available energy uh, attracts spirits and he would be inviting spirits, light spirits, dark spirits create an interesting dynamic mix and if people can recognize of course the, the different powers, the play of the powers, the powers which are um, awakening in themselves or aligning with themselves, they can gain a, lot, a real experience of uh, higher worlds. So this is not an easy thing to do of course, to manage a space for such a long time, most rituals are a lot shorter usually take a few hours, uh, maybe a few days, but definitely not uh, a few weeks. So this is quite a feat to be able to uh, to maintain a ritual and to harness the energy for, uh, for such a long period. But also energies can rise very quickly and can also fall very quickly. And um, Often these mythical beings and paranormals are also attracted to opportunities. So if a person is going to a initiation or a very deep transformation, um, then often they will feel attracted to witness such an event, which is, spiritually speaking, a, a big celebration. And they will also often want to help or to participate in the events to, in a way, help give birth to the person's consciousness on the higher level. So often places of initiation will yeah, already have quite a, a population or will have very open uh, doors to other dimensions so the spirits can come there quite easily. Um, as how to contact these uh, spirits during the ritual, I usually just talk to them. Sometimes I talk to them out loud, uh, sometimes I simply uh, yeah, think or visualize what I want them to do. And sometimes I lead them by making a certain movement or beating a certain rhythm uh, so they will join me in this and uh, help me strengthen that. And the more you work with a certain spirit, the more um, skilled you will be at uh, being yeah, dance partners in a way. You will feel what the other person wants or is doing um, without actually uh, consciously analyzing it. Like when you're dancing, you're in a way feeling the motion of the music and of your partner. You're not thinking about where to put my feet and how to twist my body and which move to make. It is very subtle signals and the other one just responds to it and moves with it. So I would say that working with, uh, with spirits uh, during a ritual is very similar to, uh, to dancing. Bad things not to do. Um, well, I tend not to be very forceful with them. Sometimes a spirit um, uh, wants to quit and I always let them quit. When a new spirit wants to enter into an existing ritual, I usually don't allow it. Um, when ritual is being built up, then in a way all the spirits which are there contribute to the energy, so it is in a way a joint energy body, the ritual space. And if a new person enters into it at a later time, um, they won't have that same connection. So it is very good to keep people in the ritual space and don't let them wander in and out and definitely not allow them to come in later. Um, because the person will simply not be able to harmonize or to participate in a very harmonious manner. It can be done, so you can spend some time to try to attune the person, to bring them in the right vibration so that they can enter 
into it. And if the person themselves is very skilled in attuning their energy body, they can move in and out of rituals. But for the, yeah, the average Joe, um, I would not uh, recommend uh, allowing this to happen. Um, so I would definitely use spirits also to, uh, uh, to help screen whether a person is ready to enter again or when they've left that they're not bringing any and they're still going to influence as they might have picked up outside of the protection of the of the ritual into the ritual space to contaminate it or to twist it because ritual spaces are attractive to spirits there's lots of energy there there's lots of food there people are very open so the people are also very vulnerable so ritual spaces should really be uh, be well guarded and you can summon uh, for instance gargoyles talking about mythical creatures to uh, to protect such a ritual space quite well and to um, devour or, um, any energetic parasites which might be uh, troubling such a place. It's also the reason why in the better cathedrals they do have gargoyles because otherwise the energy would simply very quickly become uh, corrupted and it's very easy for yeah lower vibrations to uh, um, to enter in such a place and to mask themselves as being yeah, angels or higher beings. So I tend not to um, trust uh, sacred places um, unless there are indeed healthy and active guardians there. And I think this is very important advice to anybody who is going to temples or churches to first in a way connect to the guardians, see if indeed the place is in a good condition before you start praying and opening yourself up to the energy of that place. Because places of power um, are fought over between the light side and the dark side, so they tend to switch sides um, relatively often if there is not a very powerful guardian there. I hope this has uh, given you some insight on um, how to work with uh, your uh, spirit guides during the